Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to the World Changers Huddle Live. I am your host, Diamond, and as you can see, my special guest, Mama Fat Stacks, is in the building. Ew, 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 so excited, so excited. Mama Fat Stacks is here in the building. You will get to meet her um, up close and personal. We're going to talk about her journey from the corporate boardroom to the New York City billboards. So excited, so excited for her and all that's happening in her life. So welcome to the huddle, welcome to the huddle. Welcome to the huddle, welcome to the huddle. Get ready. Listen, as the airplane people say, the, what are the stewardess? It was like, sit back, put your seatbelt on and enjoy the ride. So make sure you got your notebooks and your um, paper so you can record all the nuggets she will be giving you. Um, we're going to go right in and um, just talk about her being the cover girl. Oh my gosh, the cover girl of I Matter magazine. So we are blessed to have her here today. Mama Fat Stacks, wonder where in the world she is coming from or where she is at today. Welcome to the huddle. Welcome to the huddle. All righty, let's go. Hey, mama. Hey. How are you? There we go. There you go. There we go. Very well. Okay. Much better. There we go. Welcome, mama fat stacks to the huddle. I'm so excited. <laughs> So excited. Look, got my little got my little charm, got my charm on. I'm stacked. I'm stacked. <laughs> I'm stacked. I'm so excited to have you here as our special guest today here in the World Changers Huddle. Um, so excited, so excited to have you here. Love, I always want to come and just rob you of everything and I see in the background of your um wherever you are. Uh -huh. I, oh, I just want to come back and like she ain't gonna miss this. <laughs> miss this you know what i mean i'm the first thing i see when i walk in so i have an eye for while i went bad i'm gonna do that that's cute mm -hmm. that's cute welcome to the huddle mama fat sex i'm so excited to uh to be able to um share this platform with you today and if you missed it if you missed it, I'll show you in a minute. Mama Fat Sex is the cover girl of I Matter magazine. Let me get it up real quick for you all. Let me get it up for you real quick because I want you to see her in all of her glory, all of her glory, uh, you know, just a portion of her life because, you know, I Matter magazine is just a portion of her life. Um, she has been in multiple magazines, traveled the world for business and for pleasure, and then had a nerve to bring us back some trinkets from around the world and bless us with her awesome gift and creativity and purpose of making us these amazing um, accessories to accessorize our life. I ain't going to tell y'all her story. I'm just telling you what she's done for me and the multiple people that tune in and get stoned, you know what I mean, multiple times a week. But, you know, it's something to be able to travel and to share what you um how what the, you know the things that you when you come back your gifts that you the trinkets you pick up around the world and um you know share them with us through your through your gift so i'm gonna uh, do this because it makes me do it twice and show y'all real quick who she be who she be i said who she be i said who she be because she said, you know, for the winter of 2022. There she go. Oh, wait, it went too fast. Gotta go back. I'm learning this thing. There we go. There she go. Can you see it, mama? There it is. I see it. Yep, that's it. I see it. And that's me. I'm trying to get back to you. There we go. The cover girl. The cover girl. The cover girl. The cover girl. Y'all see it? Cover girl. I love, I love the uniqueness of I Matter magazine and the um liberty we have to do it our way radical um amazing fierce so so love the amazing people that i encounter around the world and she is rocking this cover out so if you have not gotten your copy of i matter magazine sporting our cover girl miss 
Mama Fat Sacks herself, Mrs. Mama Fat Sacks herself, <laughs> then make sure you go and support her. And we will be showing you a sneak peek of the magazine and a few minutes of all her pages that she covers, you know, whether it is in editorial, her article about her life and her journey, or her living her journey in surround sound and color where her <laughs> models who ripped the runway up in Fashion Week, New Orleans, New Orleans, New Orleans, New Orleans. New Orleans Fashion Week, and uh, she invaded it. You know, some people show up, some people may RSVP, some people just may crash it, but Miss, you know, Mama Fat Sacks went and invaded Fashion Week. You understand me? She invaded it, took it over, and we're going to get right into her story right now. So, so appreciative. Everybody, round of applause for my amazing friend, my amazing friend, Mama Fastag. Woo! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh God! Did I give you enough homage? Did I give you enough? Girl, uh... from the heart. Just speaking from the heart. <laughs> Thank just, you, love. Just speaking from the heart. So <laughs> let's get into it because I want to talk um, with the topic of when their ceiling is your floor. Okay. Well, yeah, that one. Meditate on that. Ceiling is your floor, and I want to um, I want to hone that in, um, especially targeting the um, your journey of coming from the boardroom to the billboards. Cause they ain't look like no business suit. I'm pretty sure you ain't go to no corporate America wearing what you wore. You know what I mean? I, I know you ain't do that. So you had to change your attire. You know what yeah. I mean? When you change your purpose or you change your um, occupation, I'm going to say that occupation, yeah. you change your attire to fit the occupation. So I'm going to let you talk and tell the people, you know, your journey from corporate America to invading New York Fashion Week, New York Fashion Week, and having the billboard, billboards, because that thing was everywhere. I, it was a takeover on social media of how many people saw it, screenshot it, people that were there with you. Yeah. I was like, I was there with you. I was just warm because I wasn't out there in the cold. <laughs> it, was just, it was just so amazing to see that. So go ahead and talk so I won't tell your story. That, that part was probably one of the most amazing moments that I've had in my life. And I feel like a lot of things have happened. I've been blessed to have experiences. Number one, let me say that, to have gone places and done things and all of that. But that one particular day, seeing myself up on a billboard at 43rd and Broadway in the heart of Times Square, uh, Hard Rock Cafe was behind me type. And every time it came up, it was like I'd never seen it before. But the in all of the people, my stoners, my queen stoners and kings and queens, I love them so much. You know how many screenshots I had in my inbox when I got off of there? Because I wasn't taking no pictures. I didn't even know where my phone was half the time. My assistant had my phone. She was live. I, you know, did my thing there. But they took screenshots. They celebrated with me. They told me later a lot of them drank with me. They were in the living room screaming, drinking like that. It's probably the most amazing part because people do things all the time and everybody doesn't take the journey with you. They don't love on you Come on, and sis. build you up or they see me go through things like I've just lost my sister a couple of days ago and they're in my inbox sending me love and light, encouraging me. I have my godmother, my Madam Queen that makes sure I eat every day. I haven't because I'll forget to eat just working but when I get into a space she knows that's the last thing I'm gonna do is eat and just the love of making sure that I ate today I have those kinds of customers aka stoners and that is the biggest blessing that's what gets me up when I don't feel good when my back hurts when my head hurts when I just don't feel like it you know when you don't want to go to work but it's not hard to get up and come because that's who I'm creating for yeah. those are the people that's walking through life going to Jamaica Oh, I'm stoned in Jamaica. Look, oh, I'm stoned in this places I've never been. They're taking my jewels with them and, and rocking them as they travel, as they this, as they that, telling people about me. So the gratification, is that the word I want? The, mm -hmm. the substance of the, of the love that I get, of the attention that Ingenious Jewels gets is beyond measure. And I worked at General Electric for what, eight years? I became a manager at a corporate card. 
And I did all the things and none of that times 12 compares to a smidget of what I'm living now. You know what I'm saying? It's not about the money. It's not about the fame. It's not about any of that. It's about working hard, diligently, consistently, and then being able to see it up in lights, if you will. You know what I'm saying? Being able to in, you know, interact with you, become friends with you. You use your platform to tell a story about me. You know a lot of people. You've been at this for a while and you're good at what you do and you chose to do it the way you did it. You emptied the whole clip reloaded it and emptied it again on this one you know like <laughs> that right there is everything and I'm 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 very appreciative and I can always in a day in a moment find something to give thanks for and this I'll be able to give thanks for this for eons like I I really do appreciate you doing this I really really do it feels good listen I tell everybody you know I appreciate you thanking me but I appreciate you living in purpose because I always say legacies are made when passions collide and collaborate I need you to be already running in your passion so that we can collide because we're going in the same direction we're mm -hmm. running together and we can collide and collaborate and make a bigger impact on this world so as much as you thank me for allowing you to be on here thank you for living in purpose because it takes you to be that for you to be effective the way I need, I want the magazine to be. So right. I, I love how eclectic we are, that we can be fierce and fly and still be about purpose and business, you know? Let me tell y'all how fierce she is. She over there stoning and getting people's, uh, you know, doing what she does while she on this live, you know what I mean? That's just, <laughs> this is what we do, you know, that's just what we do. So she's giving you a behind the scenes of how she creates these amazing, amazing um. I don't even know what I want to say, these amazing experiences, because it's not just jewelry or just an accessory, it's an experience. And I want you to talk about that. Let me tell you this before I forget, because I got mom brain. <laughs> All right. I was going through something this week and um, last week, last week. And let me tell you how effective you are. I read every article and I told you this when I read it, how powerful it was to me when I read it then. But mm -hmm. things, things stick with me. And you said when you left corporate America and you experienced some issues financially and stuff like that, mm -hmm. it was never a question of going back to corporate America. It was about expanding what you were already doing because you had more to do. And mm -hmm. I, that was in my ear last week, um, at the end of the week, when I had to transition very quickly um, from the road I was going on, I had to adjust and pivot so that I can still accomplish my goals. And what kept me and pushed me, the wind in my back, the voice in my ear, because you're part of my squad and my tribe, because we speak the language, was what you said. I'm not going back. I'm not retreating. I'm not going to do, you know, the safe thing, what looks good on paper. I am going to continue on my journey going this way, but I'm going to expand more in what I'm doing because I have more on my plate. I have more responsibilities. And so I, it was just in my ear, sis. And I want to thank you for that. So, you know, I just don't want things to be put in the magazine. I, I literally want substance and substance is what sustains you. And I'm telling you those words because I read them and we talked about it, sustain me last week to keep me on the path I needed to pivot and be on to be able to still produce and be effective and still be and living in my purpose and wow. I appreciate you for that I really do I really do so that means a lot to me that means a lot to me I'm, I'm glad that I was able to be used to deliver the words in such a way that they helped you in that moment because people like you we have a lot our plates are heavy and big and stuff is spilling off on the floor on all the sides sometimes. And if we stop, a lot of other things stop. There are people who will never speak to you in life who depend on you to get up and do what you do. Yeah. And they will never, ever say anything to you. It's not about that. Like Michael Jackson, none of us got to meet him, but how much influence did he have over us? Because yeah. he kept doing what he was doing. And he never would have, he could, couldn't possibly have met all of the billions of people that, that he touched, but he, 
he had a responsibility to us in that way because he got up and he did what he did and it's the same thing for us because you just don't know you don't ever know right your son needs you you know what i'm saying i don't need you to quit your son needs you so if i did what i was supposed to do that kept you going then i'm doing my job and that, that's what i'm here for that's the whole point so. And that's what you did. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about it, sis. Let's talk about, um, okay, let's start with the first, was part A, and then we'll get into part B. So okay. your journey, since you already started that, your journey from corporate America to the billboard and really um, becoming Mama Fat Stacks and the Queen Stoner, Empress Stoner, since you have queens under you, the Empress, you know, oh. um, what 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 was that journey like what was that decision that day that month that year and saying that i can't do this anymore i'm not satisfied i'm not content i have more on the inside of me what was that decision making a uh, moment in your head what was that like man it had a lot of parts to it and it was the straw that broke the camel's back kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, something be brewing in you and you don't know, like going up on the cliff. And you know, all you got to do is jump, but it's the, from here to there, how do I get my body to go over there? It was like that. And it was me trying to get to the edge. I had started creating. I had started. Going. My husband is leaving. I'm going to cry for about 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, I had been looking at the ledge. My kids were little. I have a special needs son. My oldest son is special needs. He was cutting up the whole food. He was doing the whole most. I had a corporate job. I enjoyed the time after work, after everybody was taken care of when I could create, but that time was very limited. All of my time was going to this other, this corporation. And I was doing due diligence. I had been given a promotion without extra money to do, have more responsibility for the same pay. You know how that goes. People that work for people know exactly what I'm talking about. I was right. doing the job of three people and there was a due diligence for a big corporation. And my manager, the responsibility was mine, my department. It was only my manager and myself. I didn't have anybody under me. And a lot was going on at home. I was trying to maintain how we do. And he called me into the office and told me that I needed to report to somewhere Minneapolis I don't know somewhere far and I needed to be there in two days and I'm like how long have you known about this and he said oh well we got the call last week that they closed the deal but I was gonna go and I decided not to so you need to go and in that moment I, I think about it now and my ears get hot because I almost went to jail because I wanted to flip the desk over because how dare you handle me like that. This is my life. These are my children, my family, me, you know what I'm saying? My livelihood. This is how I take care of my family. How dare you con try to control it the way that you just did? You could have told me last week when the deal came through, there's a possibility one of us had to go, but he took his position too far. And then him telling me that meant in 48 hours, I had to be out of my home. And that, those trips lasted anywhere from four days to a week, you're working constantly, then you got to fly back and finish whatever you're doing, like real time, live files going, blah, blah, blah. And I resented it to the point where I didn't think about bills that I had to pay. I didn't think about any of that. I thought about the fact that he had too much control over my life and I needed to take it back. I didn't call home. I didn't think about it. I said, I'm, I quit. No, no, no. I know what I said. I said, I'm going home because I work from home part of the week. I'm going home and I'll, I'll talk about it with you later, whatever I said, but you need to figure that out because I'm not going. And he flared his nose out at me. And it's a black man. This ain't no black and white issue. This is a black man I'm talking to who I thought, you know, was my colleague and my friend. I found out that wasn't. And he said, sit down. I said, I'll stand. He says, sit down. I said, I'll stand. Like, are we really doing this? I'm out. I went, I got my, my things that I, if I'm one of those people that when I leave, I make peace with whatever I'm leaving behind. I grabbed what I could. It wasn't no pack in no box, but I knew I wasn't coming back. I grabbed my stuff. I went home. I called HR. I said, 
I want to turn in my resignation. And they freaked out. The VP and the um, HR manager freaked out. And the HR manager is, was a Black woman. There wasn't very many Black people in management at, at General Electric in my division at that time. It was only a couple of us. So she's like, sis, like, wait a minute. Have you thought about this? I'm like, I don't need this. She said, I'm not accepting your resignation. I spoke to the VP. He doesn't accept it. Uh, it was a Tuesday. I'll never forget it. I said, um, she, he said, she said, give it some time. And, and I said, fine, I'll talk to you on Friday. They called a meeting. I said, I'm gonna tell you the same thing Friday and I'm gonna have my letter typed up. Friday came, I gave them the letter. They couldn't, I had a list of impossible demands that I knew they couldn't meet. It wasn't in the budget to give me a raise. Uh, they couldn't move me from out of that department. You know, it was too many things that I knew that they couldn't do. So I made it impossible for them to keep me, basically. I demanded things that I knew that they couldn't give me. And they really were like, you know, are you sure this is the right move for you? And I was like, you know what? This is y'all's life. I have a whole different life that I'm supposed to be living. And my blood pressure was 220 over 120. I was gonna stroke out any minute. I was 35 years old, 2000. I was 35 years old. I had 220 over 120. I was taking 40 milligrams of blood pressure medication and all kinds of crap. I don't need this. It was like, figure it out. And it was like, when the smoke clears, like, what did you do? I did it. I did it. And I figured it out as I went and, and I had to learn what trusting yourself really means. I had to learn if I really believed in all the things that I said about myself that, that I claimed to believe. That's when you, 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 that's when your toes get to the fire and you find out if you really are about that life. Because I left a corporate job with a corporate card. I left a management position. I was salaried and I walked away and I never went back. I've worked for a, I, I worked for someone when I was a flight attendant, which didn't even feel like a job. <laughs> I was living my best life, but going back to an office, uh, even an office, I'm just not interested. That just wasn't my life. So it literally was. I don't know if it was his nose flaring out. I don't know what it was. It was just that one last thing that I just couldn't take no more. For 48 hours, it was impossible. There was no way I was going to be able to do it. I was going to wreck my whole life just to come up with the energy and the everything I needed to do that for them. And they cared nothing about me in my life. And I vowed to myself, I'm going to create a life that that's never going to happen to me again. And so far, I'll knock on wood because I ain't superstitious. It hasn't. And I'm thankful for all of the trials and tribulations because it just sharpens your blade and makes you do it better the next time. I'm over here. I have myself <laughs> muted because I'm over here screaming on the other side. You dropping so many nuggets, sis. So many nuggets. I was like, let me mute myself so I don't have to interrupt her and let her flow. But yes, all of, I'm not going to recap all of that. All of that. I hope you guys were taking notes. When you evaluate your environment, when you evaluate your life and you have determined what you want your quality of life to be, and you evaluate your life and it doesn't measure up. I always say there's power of choice. Nobody makes you go to this one job, do this one thing every day and be miserable and unsatisfied every day of your life. You voluntarily cause yourself misery. Mm -hmm. Yes, we need finances. Yes, we need to be adults and take care of ourselves and you know be responsible. But how you do that is your choice. How you do that is your choice. So you have to, first of all, know what you want your quality of life to be, know what your purpose is and what you desire to do. And mm -hmm. um, none of that can be negotiated. Your peace, your happiness, your joy. Understand we have to compromise on some levels, but compromise does not mean um, remove or abandon your dreams and your purpose. And as she said, if you're doing 100% for everybody else, and that's not being not even reciprocated, but your life and what you need to do to even help them get done what needs to be done is not being considered, then I believe you are in an unhealthy relationship. <laughs> and, you know, I think you really need to evaluate how much your quote unquote job 
or wherever you give yourself to, wherever you, whatever you lend yourself to. And this is the this is the wording. I'm telling people, watch your wording. When you lend, you lend yourself to people, you lend yourself to your in, uh, employment, you lend yourself to other relationships that you are in. And when you lend yourself, are you safe there? Are you valued there? Is there anything that is making sure that you are okay or even equipped to do the job or do the tasks that they're asking you to do? Because if they're not assisting you, be the best you to assist them and you are still getting out of what you, and I'm not talking about a paycheck. Money can come from anywhere. They've created multiple streams of income around this world. We choose, um, people choose to get up and go to a job that's miserable, low pay, no benefits, talk about it all day at the cooler and do the same thing every day, every week. When are right. you going to take control of your life? And going back to our title, sis, when they're floor when their ceiling is your floor you had so much more to give you have so much more to give and sometimes we settle and belittle ourselves or we shrink ourselves to keep hitting our head on someone else's ceiling when we're so much more than that so much more than that for um and i'm gonna let you chime in because i want you to talk um, sometimes let's talk about those reasons why people stay where they have outgrown that spaces. Because I want to, I'm always teaching. Let's help the people today. And please chime in. We're on social media live. This is being recorded. It will be on our YouTube page at I, I Matter Media um, with our other content. But talk to me in a live. Our chat is open. Um, feel free to um, DM me or inbox me and I can look at it there also, but feel free to chime in. Why do we stay in places that no longer serve us? Why do we stay in places that we have outgrown? And I know the answer. So I, I know some answers, but I'm gonna let you talk, sis, and then people in the audience, because this is an interact interactive conversation. Mm -hmm. So please feel free so that we can answer some questions for you all. It's on you, sis. For me, I stayed in that particular unhealthy relationship because of the life that I built around it. And that's a lot of why a lot of people that I know and that I've experienced over the years, what I've heard people tell me is, I, I, I hate to say that it's fear, but it's rooted in fear of- what It so, is, that's I exactly what, what it is. is. I know what this is, even though I hate it or I'm uncomfortable, it's like I'm comfortable with my abuser more so than me going out and I feel like somebody else is going to abuse me too because I think you deal with the devil that you know is about. what they say. You, you, the you, you exactly. deal with the devil that you know. The devil that you know. So because I had a home, I had mortgage to pay, I had children to raise, you know, I had built a life around this job. It wasn't very easy to just say, I'm done. Every time I wanted to be done, I got bills to pay. I don't have the other things happening, you know, and Genius hadn't been bringing that much money in it. It was just kind of a hobby, a side hustle at the time. So it wasn't enough to cover all of my life expenses that I had created based on the income that I was getting from this job. Mm -hmm. So you keep showing up. Now, if you really, really, really bought that life, then you're gonna start doing something else so that you can pivot on up out of there, slide on up out of there, whether it be abruptly like I did or you plan it, to when you get to this point, you know what? I got this much saved up. This is going good. I'm a step over here. And sometimes I've, I, I've, I've experienced it with other people when I'm watching from the outside, they'll be in a position to move over there, but they're still not comfortable with the unknown of it. So they stay because, well, I know you. So I'm going to stay here and do this. I know this. I know I'm going to make this much on my paycheck. Yeah, I'm going to have $6 left after I pay my bills, but I've been doing it this long. You know, yeah. they rationalize with themselves. They make excuses for whatever. And I'm not putting anybody down because I did it. But at some point, enough is enough. Because yeah. if you, you have to shift your mindset, we build a prison. Have. We personally yeah. build a prison yeah. of a life that we have to struggle to maintain. And it costs us our peace, our joy, our freedom in a sense of, well, I have to do this now. Before you were doing it and you created this life, now you created this budget 
You created this budget of a lifestyle that you are now imprisoned to the job or the um the job that you currently have to maintain that lifestyle. And what suffers is your purpose, your passion, and yep. you are not even the same person anymore. When I didn't like a job, I knew I didn't like it. When I started waking up late, I would start coming in late. I would be cordial. I would have to... I would have to coach myself on how to deal with my coworkers mm -hmm. so that I can maintain my, my peace during my day as much as possible. That's too much work. That is, it is. too much work to have to contemplate, plan out your, your strategies of attack and defense before mm -hmm. you even go to a place that you already have work to do. And I knew enough was enough. Like, yes. and I know now it takes some time. So these are mm -hmm. tools. Sometimes you, you, you may be more progressed than other people, but if you're a newbie and you're just understanding that, yeah, you know what? I'm not really comfortable and I really haven't stepped out before. It may take you some time to actually get that strength in, but it's going to continually, there are going to be signs that you should not be there anymore. When you're talking about your job or just regular relationships or any other kind yes. of interactions that you have in your life, these life experiences show signs of when you are not safe, when you are not valued, when this is not the environment for you. So there will be constant signs that be, get intense the longer you stay. And you'll be more yes. aware of them and realize how much you are tolerating, how much you are accepting, and how many times you hit your head on that ceiling. Like, how many times are you going to do that before you just go to a bigger place, a bigger space where you can grow and evolve and breathe? Because being in a toxic relationship on any level is suffocating, it's toxic. You cannot breathe. You're, you're constantly frustrated and like um mama stacks fast sex said you like your body shows signs and symptoms of dis-ease mm -hmm. mm -hmm. taking blood pressure pills and stuff like that you got to alleviate the stress alleviate the the trigger that is causing your body to react that way and a lot of times we medicate either with pills or other substances, or right. you know, other things in life, we medicate the the disease instead of fixing it and alleviating the disease and the issues. Mm -hmm. So, um, go ahead, you mom. What I, I learned. Got to say. <laughs> when I learned too is when you make. I told my daughter this. She made one decision at one point of her life because she was younger and she was working with the information that she had. She stayed in that situation and she grew. She changed, she evolved. So she's not that girl that made the decision anymore. And she's holding her life to the decisions of her 19 year old self. So you're 32 years old, you're 40 years old, you're 60 years old. You're still in the situation that you created when you were 25. You're not that person anymore. So I learned from that particular experience that at the time I wanted to be a corporate Buffy. I did. I liked that. I was corporate. I had a corporate card. I didn't know anybody with a corporate card. I didn't even know what that meant. I didn't know how to file an expense report, any of that. So I wanted that life because it was a bucket list item. Then as I did it, I found out it ain't. that particular situation that I was in wasn't the ideal situation for me. So I grew into this person that that doesn't work for anymore. Now I got to figure out how to recreate my life to the person that I am now. And as we keep evolving, we got to keep reassessing. You got to keep reassessing your friends every couple of months. You got to reassess your car. Does that still work? Your house now is too small for you, where it was too big for you when you moved into it. We outgrow things. And I'm learning now to look at that when I start something. Am I going to quickly outgrow this? Where am I going? Is this going to be working for me? Is this a right decision for me to make now? Am I going to regret this in two months? You know, I look forward at myself in two months. I didn't do that before. I didn't know to do that. I didn't understand how much I was going to change. Mm. I and remember like always evolving. That's a good thing. Always. We're not who we are. And a lot of people stay trapped. And even though they've grown in age, their maturity or their um, power that they have, their perception of their self is still stuck where they were traumatized at or stuck when they made those decisions at. Mm -hmm. And it's not a healthy thing for you to be doing that because you'll keep aging. Aging doesn't stop unless you transition off of this earth, but it's your job to take care of your maturity and your evolution. 
And mm-hmm. if you have a desire, we always talk about purpose here. So your purpose is always going to evolve. Where we started at with iMatters Magazine is not where we are now, but I still love volume one because honey, that was all heart, you know, and everything, yeah. but I, I knew I couldn't stay there. And I didn't, you know, you have to evolve out of who you are. I always use this um, analogy of a chick coming out of an egg when that thing breaks through, the eggshells are so much smaller and you're looking at the size of the eggshell versus what came out of it and it can never go back into it because it was, it, it kept hitting his head on the ceiling and it decided I have to get out of here. It's my time. I can, this thing can no longer contain me. When your purpose and passion is brewing inside of you and you have identified it and you're feeding that thing, you are, um, you know, at, you're planning it, you're doing stuff with it. It's like work and other things are like, come on now, I gotta go do this. I'm, I love what I'm doing here. But if you're feeding that thing and it evolves, it, it's going to consume you it's going to consume you in a good way and it's going to highly identify other things that are not feeding it other things that are taking you away from it so it's your job your responsibility to evolve to identify your purpose and like mom fat mama fat stack said to always always assess your environment because you have the power to create the environment that you can thrive in you may have to downsize. You may, just have, may have to transition. You just have to make a decision about what option um, you would need to take to still um, get to your end goal. It's not negating what you want to do and what can happen. And just like you, and this is why I want to tell people, take a step back because when you're in the moment, it's very intense. Mm-hmm. Take a step back, breathe. And please understand the life that you built now came from nothing. You did the work then to be who you are now. And so as you have evolved, take a step back and do that same thing so that you can be where you desire to be in your future, in your near future. Because where you are now did not just happen overnight. You had to do some work. You had to do some planning. You had to do some execution. You had to do some discipline. You had to do some sacrifice. It's the same thing. And your quality of life will suffer if you don't. You can have a you can have a lot of things in life. Money, mm-hmm. you can have a lot of people surrounding you. You can have a big old house and a big old car. You can be going on trips, but your quality of life quality of life, your peace, the love that you have, the life that you live, living in purpose is determined by what you do with it. So we can accessorize life to make it look good, but you know, on the inside, you still empty. You're not fulfilling your dreams. You're just doing stuff and have stuff. And that's why people always want more trying to feed that thing, but they're feeding it with um, uh, empty calories is what I say. You know how you hungry, you eat something <laughs> and it ain't what you want, but you got to eat something else again. Yep. Yeah. So yep. I'm. So we got some nuggets and stuff going on. I want to make sure we keep be mindful of our time. And I also, so let's take a break from that. I hope you got some nuggets for that. We can't give you everything. You got to read the article. You got to come watch these huddles. You got to buy the books. Go to the Radical Arsenal on ShereldDiamondHogans.com. And there are plenty of books there, resources, or um, archives magazines with timeless articles that give you nuggets and you know resources so you can create the life that you desire to thrive in so these are just not cliches it's something we do because we get to do this and meet up with you now but let me take you to i'm gonna do a real quick flash thing so you can kind of see the couple of pages that she got you know in i matter magazine Make sure you go and support her. And um, she has the link. She'll probably put the link in the um, tonight, Mama. This could be about you. So put your link in the um, comments and stuff. Um, okay. And you go and support her with that. But let me show you real quick what she's working with. She is amazing. Let me stop that. Do this. Get out of there. Oh, uh, let's see. All right, so I know what I'm gonna do. I gotta go down here. It's stuck in the um. It was stuck in the um. It was stuck in the slideshow. Oh. 
I got it. I didn't want to show the whole magazine. They got to go and support you for that. <laughs> right. I just wanted to do a quick view of your, oh, you know what? Your stuff is all the way through. I was like, why is that up there? That's because you're, um, you're, um, you're fashionistas, <laughs> your fashionistas, oh. your models are, um, your models are all throughout the magazines as ads. Aha, uh -huh, that's right. Look at that. And she said, that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so thank you all for bearing with me. I am going to quickly show you um, her, quickly show you her, um, her pages in the magazine. Slide shoe. Um, current slide. Mm. I said from current slide and look what it did. <laughs> That's all right. Cause I know where to go get it at. Close your eyes and stop peeking. Go buy the magazine. <laughs> Where you at? There we go. Hey, there it is. I know. Listen, I got to You got Belinda jumping around everywhere. Let me stop pushing stuff. <laughs> look at, look at this. Look at this. Let me y'all look at this. Right here. This is what she does on the runway. This is what she does on the runway, right? This is what she does on the runway. I was ecstatic. Listen, I, was I understand that. So ecstatic. I could have did a cartwheel right there. <laughs> I understand that. It was like all of these uh, photographers and media people right in front of me. And I was just like, ah! Show <laughs> out, honey. Show all the way out indeed. That's what you're supposed to do. So I just want to flip through real quick and let you see. These are some of the, look at her on the billboard. That's the billboard <laughs> shot right there. It's going to catch up. Billboard shot right there. Yeah. I get from the, every time I see a picture. Yes, yeah, from the billboard, <laughs> from the boardroom to the billboard. And I'm going to leave this here for a second. This is one of her models wearing mm -hmm. her amazing, amazing um, accessories, um, accessories or experiences um, around her neck. And this one is called I Am That I Am. I Am That I Am. So, um, Mama Fat Sex, tell people what your passion is, what you do, and let's talk about this piece, I Am That I Am, and how you came to name your pieces. Ooh, that one, particularly, I named that look that. That piece is actually called Blue Banzai. The necklace was created after a trip to Japan. The first time I went to Asia, we went to Tokyo, Japan, and I went right during cherry blossom season. I'm in love with embroidery, carved wood, um, um, Asian silks, things like that. And I discovered, so the, the leather is like my interpretation of, of a tree. So I found a way to, to manipulate it so that I could bend it however I wanted to, like how kind of kind of tree limbs. So all of the models had that. So that was the cohesiveness of the collection to show that we're all grounded in something. Mm. That particular necklace can, is made of Asian silk that we got over it when we were in Japan. And these and this big shell that I got, I think I got that in like Myrtle Beach or somewhere, but it was a shell that I had never seen before. A pile, pile, like a pile shell, P-A-U-O, something like that. Um, and then it had these um, druzy pieces throughout. So that particular necklace is in the glory book for Creative Soul. It's a New York Times bestseller. It's on page like 146. That necklace is very well traveled, right? So I put it on her and she had the attitude of like a roundaway girl. She was kind of, you couldn't just look at her and figure her out. You looked at her, you thought, oh, she might be a hood girl. You don't know. She's, you know, she might be a little black girl. She might, whatever. You draw your own conclusions. But I named that look, I am that I am, because it's up to her. It's not up to somebody to decide who she is. And she's got this well-traveled international piece 
around her neck. And I wanted her to be grounded in who she was to show it. I felt like she was the one to pull it off. You know what I'm saying? It was that, it was in the moment of looking at the models because you don't pick your models. Well, I didn't get to pick my models until I got to New York. And so day of, I'm looking, I have these looks prepared, but I have to match the look with the energy of the model, not just throw something on there because it doesn't translate that way. Right. And I am that I am was one of the, was one of the affirmations. Like I kind of had an affirmation for each of the models. If, if, if you follow that, because you can be looking on and you don't believe it. I've watched shows, I've seen pictures, I've seen a lot of things and you can see it all, but the model is not giving the energy that's needed to pull off the idea. Right. She gave me that very thing that I needed to say, I am that I am. Now you figure it out. It was like, she it. had all the attitude. Her body was banging. She had all of the curves where I needed it. I didn't need her to be a straight pencil. I needed her to be curvy because don't come for me. And she had the fierceness that I needed. And she was the one, you know, it was, it was a no brainer for it. When I saw her and I interacted with her a little bit, it was like, yeah, you're, you're, you're that one. Now you fit. It was always, you figure it out. So let's talk about some of the pieces that I'm going to do one more. Should I, have, should I give him one more? Should I give him one more? <laughs> huh? Yes. All right. Let's go back to your, 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 your shining glory one. There. <laughs> let's do this one. I don't need them yet. Oh my gosh. I am colorful and full of life. So first of all, the my closing model there, she's been working with me for years. She's was my muse for many years. I would create something new and I could call her and be like, we need to shoot. And she could transform into whatever that was that I had going on and pull that look off every time. So she closed my show and she was my Bridgerton look. I love long flowy dresses. I love something that makes you stand up. That's why the base of the collection was corsets because I wanted them to be in, in all of their glory, if you will. And then I wanted her to be particularly colorful so that she kind of represented love, of course, that's why I use the color red, but also all of the different things that love, that love includes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I can love you but do I respect you? If I disrespect you, do you think I love you? You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. Yeah, so people don't. People, the girl, don't get me started. People don't. <laughs> people don't understand that. Go kick um, twisted pleasures. I just posted something right before we got on here. So that whole okay. love piece, I'm gonna let you have that. Go watch the twisted pleasures um, video I posted. Um, right. And watch that. Talk about how you name your pieces, sis. So um, you go ahead and do that. I won't talk over you. <laughs> Oh, you're good. Your, you're good. Pieces, your selections i gotta come up with a better piece because the ensemble i you're I, you gotta it's not just an accessory you gotta come up with something of what your what your your purpose is in these experiences and it doesn't do it justice to say an accessory well, no how do you, how do you I, name your i artists? refer to them as pieces because they're they're amulets Back in the day, if you read, you know, like old, old texts, they talk about being, being protected by, because there were stones in those pieces. We didn't understand what they were talking about, but they were talking about the power of the stones that were in the pieces and what they represented. Certain, certain stones mean certain things. And they represent a certain level, like how, you know, you see diamonds and rubies and sapphires and emeralds and you think, okay, that's money. You see, you know, just some semi-precious stones and you think, okay, well, that's all right. It's better than plastic, but it's not a diamond. So the one, the one part of your question to name the pieces is based on the stones that are used, the color of them, because the colors mean something. And then putting it all together with how I feel about it, because it's all about me. It's all about me. This is my message. This is my cre this, these are my creations. This is my art. This is my contribution to what I consider to be art. So if I'm a woman and I want to feel good and I want to feel beautiful and I want to feel my power, then I want to put, you know, like you say, more than accessories, I want to wear something artistic that represents how I feel about myself. 
Her name, this one that you have up, her name was actually Queen. I can't make this up. Oh, Everybody wow. kept trying every, that dress on because this is wrap dress. And she walked up and I put it on her and I'm like, it's going to work. It's going to work. It's working. It's working. And I wrapped her in it the way I wanted it. And I'm like, what's your name? And she said, Queen. I'm like, oh my God. Because <laughs> it was wow. the only piece I had like that. She was the only one that had I had another, her sister had a co that color, but she had this long Floyd thing. So I needed, I needed queen to pull off that I am a queen because it was about her posture. It was about her, she, her fierceness. Look, she had a crop cut. She wasn't like beat to the nines. They didn't have a lot of makeup on her. She was very natural. And when we feel the best about ourselves, honestly, we don't want to be made up in, in three pounds of makeup. Exactly. We want to feel beautiful when we're not beat to the night. We want to feel I tell beautiful. everybody, you won't get this fresh face unless I really, 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 really am going somewhere because I right. got to live with me. I have to be the best me every day because I'm not yeah. going to be um, made up, caked up every day, all day for your, um, to be appeasing to you. Right. You know, you're going to have to get this rawness every now and then. these straight backs. You're going to have to understand and love these straight backs and grease the scalp of these straight backs. You yes. understand me? Yes. <laughs> you're going to have yes. to get this. What is the name of this piece <laughs> right here? That one is. What is her name? It's more somewhere. That one is. I don't even have a name for her, honestly. I hadn't named that piece yet. That so talk about how you um talk about how you would the names of some of the pieces that you do make and how you come up with those names. The art pieces like the necklaces that I showed in the show, it's it's two kind of two different processes for me. One is the art pieces that take me months and months and months to create, like this one. This mm -hmm. one actually a piece of another piece, a bigger piece. And I took it apart after I shot it, something happened and I didn't like it anymore. I was going through something and I took it apart. And when I got to go to take that part apart to use it and recreate it, I stopped. So when it was time to get ready for fashion week, I was like, do I need to finish it? And I kept looking at it and I'm like, no, I like it just like this. I don't, you know, just- That what sounds I like a about. pruning, sis. Huh? That sounds like a pruning. Exactly. I wanted it to be this, it's not complete, but you don't need all of that. I wanted her to feel like a queen without all of the extra that the original piece had. All right. she needed was that. And she she was the only one that could pull it off. She didn't, she didn't have a lot of makeup. She didn't need a lot of makeup. She didn't need a lot of anything. And so that was why I named that look, I am a queen on top of the fact that her name was Queen. So the art pieces kind of come from what the materials are, you know, where I got them from, what was happening in my life at the time. And then like these, the stacks, they come from more of, oh, you can't see me, but they come from more of what the stone means and what the metaphysical part of it. That's, it's more important to me about the healing versus where it comes from. It's, it's interesting to know where something comes from, but it's way more interesting to know that if I'm dealing with depression and I've got all of these stones that'll help you meditate on your depressive state, the fact that you wanna take your life, the fact that you feel like you're not good enough, slim enough, beautiful enough, whatever you feel like you're, you're lacking, I want to give you an affirmation to remind yourself all day long that you're better than that, you are enough. You are beautiful enough. You are whatever enough. Without it being all of this extra extravagance, you don't have to have a $3,000 necklace around your neck. You can have a stack of, of stones on and all day long, you look at it and you think, you know the name of it. So you're telling yourself, you know what? I'm healed. I'm enough. I'm tall. I have all kinds of affirmations. I don't care. I'm tall is an affirmation. If you think being short is a problem, then you need to be walking around all day calling yourself tall. Because you're you're keeping yourself back from things because you think you need to be tall. So I have a lot of affirmations that are like, that's an affirmation it is. For somebody it is. Right. Because you made they're very personal. It's what you decide you what you need at the time. It's what you exactly. need at the time. Exactly. And that's why I talk about it like that on my lives when we're doing the sales, because a lot of times they're looking and everybody is coming for a different reason. Everybody yeah. shows up. And they're looking for something. And sometimes I'll just say something 
And the spirit will say, you know what? You need to say a little bit more about that because I can feel it. And it'll be like, you know, this is also good for such and such and such and such. And the numbers will start rolling. Up. It's like, that's pretty, but I need something for such and such because people are coming particularly for something. Right. I had a woman inbox me and say, I got to go to court. She sent me a picture of all of her bracelets that she bought for me. She said, which one should I wear to court? I need to win. I was like, oh, Lord, for real, this is what we doing? I looked them up. I told her which ones that I thought. She went, she came back. She said, I won. Now I need to save my marriage. Which ones do I need to? This was like in the beginning when I first started doing this. And I was like, is this really how this is going to be? If she trusts me, you know, because it's all about the intentions that are set. It's not about some magic. It's not, it's none of that. It's about being intentional and really, really hold some space for her because she's trying to fix something in her life. And that's what we're trying to do. And she came back and 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 they've been they've been rocking ever since. They never broke up. I was like, well, let me take some credit. I did what I was supposed to do to, to, to help that along, whatever, because who knows? You know what I'm saying? But that's why I'm intentional about giving the affirmations that I give. Because it, it's not a standard template for affirmations. It's what's going to work for you. Your affirmation is yours. I can't tell you what to affirm for yourself. That's not going to help you. You need to find that for yourself. Yep. Self-evaluation it takes us right back to what we we're talking about. And we're going to close here tonight. I so appreciate your time. Time always goes quick when we start talking. Oh no. my goodness. It's always too quick. We got to go. But we go right back. Self-reflection. You have to do the work. You have the power. Life happens, but you have the power to direct life. Um, Instagram has this new thing where you can do a, um, you can leave a message or something like that, a message on your icon. Like, what is your message of the day? And the other day I had emptied a clip, but today I'm having a conversation with someone. I said, life has to expand its capacity to embrace me. I am not going to shrink when life tries to be a bully. I'm not going to shrink and have to succumb to life's plan. Life is going to have to expand its capacity to embrace me because I'm going to keep evolving. I'm just, my purpose is going to get keep getting bigger. My passion for my purpose is going to keep getting bigger. And whatever I'm doing, whatever I've already done is my stepping stone to what I'm about to do. Yes. So if you can't take this now, honey, you might as well just go another way, close your eyes. Uh, <laughs> even I mean, listen, even if you deaf is about to be in braille, so I'm going where. Listen, I'm trying to tell you, do what you got to do for you. Right. And I'm telling everybody, when people can't take your intensity, let them adjust. Yes. Don't you dare shrink. Don't you dare adjust yourself or shrink yourself. Or minimize yourself because they can't take your intensity. Let them make a choice to adjust and pivot and shift what they need to do for their own bubble. Mm -hmm. But you keep shining. You keep being bright as you can be. You earn that. Yes. There are times and experiences in life you had to fight through to be the wattage, to be the energy, to be the vote that you are today. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Don't you because dare dim your light. Who you think you are to be on a billboard in Times Square? Because, you know, there are people, oh, she's not a model. When I first started taking pictures for my, my brand, I kept saying, I'm not a model. I'm not a model. And finally, somebody who loves me dearly said, you need to stop saying that. Because you can be a model if you say you're a model and genius is yours. Who's going to tell you you can't? Who's going to who? I was like, ooh. Who is? Oh, so then when this happened, it's like every time I said it, oh, it's going to be a billboard in Times Square and I, I'm going to da, da 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 And all of my people, I know I'm, a, I'm surrounded by the right people because they were also happy for me. If there mm -hmm. was some hating people talking junk, it's they were doing what they were supposed to do and they were talking to somebody else about it because nobody came at me with it. But it, it, I could have talked myself out of that, though. I could have missed yeah. that whole experience because I could have been self-talking, telling myself. Yeah. You're not good enough to be in Times Square. Uh, uh, don't do that. No, I don't want to. I could have not taken that opportunity. And there's people that don't take opportunities like that because of that kind of self-talk. Exactly. That's why I like that. And you can have a thousand oh, yeses yeah. and that one no or two no's or them two naysayers. Well, you yeah. will give the weight. 
you will give that weight and then talk yourself out of doing what's right in front of you. And, yep. and that's what we're talking about. Your, your ceiling is your, their, somebody's ceiling is your floor. Don't minimize, let them stay on the level where they have authorization at. And you know that you have authorization to go higher. Some people, when you get on the elevator, you got to have a passcode to go to a certain floor. Normal people have to get off at the 12th floor, whatever. But if you go into the penthouse, if you're going higher than that restricted area, tap mm -hmm. in your code, do 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 do, and you keep going. You That's break right. those people. I've I've lived my life. I fought for my life. I almost died in my life, and I'll be doing if I sat there and give anybody any access or power to make me be anything less than who I desire to be. Come up, expand your. Uh, I told somebody today, you need to expand your vocabulary. I can get you a thesaurus if you want. You can use your phone and say Google. What's the synonym to this word? But I'm not going to limit myself because you can't palate me. Or you don't have the capacity to embrace me or embrace who I am. That's fine. I might not be for everybody, but I'm for me, baby. Oh, I'm yeah. for me all day. And you got to be for you. Let their ceiling be their ceiling. Let that understand that you can do them and some. What they can do, you have already done. But don't let them um, hold you back from doing the more that you have on the inside of you. There's so much more on the inside of you. Don't let naysayers Get in your head to tell you or talk you out of who you are going to be. Stretch yourself. And when you do that, there is a um, poem that says that you, um, you have to, you give them permission mm -hmm. to now see something they've never seen before. They try to tell you, come back, it's safer over here because they've never experienced someone like you who will dare run to that cliff and jump. Who will dare go to the cliff just to look over while they sit in the car or they're looking and Googling, no, we can't do this. But you got in the car, you went, you and climbed that mountain, you and went to the top of that waterfall. That's me all day. You and went to the edge of that waterfall. You and put your foot over that waterfall. And if yeah. I can swim, honey, I probably get all. I one time I did jump in a waterfall. I did. One time I did jump in. Oh, I want to swim. Listen, hey. do you? Know that, that know that some people their limitations are theirs. Let yes. them have their own limitations. Know that their ceiling it couldn't is your floor, and you don't have to stop where their fear where their fear is. Let them be there. Sometimes you are in their life to show them that it's possible. Absolutely, and find your tribe to keep talking that right talk in your ear because if somebody out there, even if and this is my thing for me, when other people are unavailable, I talk to myself. If I need to hear it out loud, I record it on my phone and I listen to it because mm -hmm. I need to hear it in this atmosphere, I need to hear it out loud. So now, me and myself, oh, we got a whole party going on and we're gonna do something else. So, this is the end of this, um, tonight. Thank you, Mama Fat Sacks, for having the courage to walk away from the boardroom and then having the courage to run and persevere to be able to be fabulous. Like, not only was she on the billboard, y'all, she was on the billboard, like, <laughs> killing it. Oh, my God, that picture. Oh, go get the magazine. Um, Mama Fast Sex, put your link, um, your um magazine link in there. So that's for you tonight. Anything that comes through on the live will be for you tonight. So put your link in there for the magazine. Go and support her. We have other fabulous radical people in the magazine who have amazing stories that we will be also talking about or meeting up with. But go and support her. Go read and get all her little, her nuggets, not little. Go get her um timeless. <laughs> priceless nuggets in there that even helped me. I'm telling you, helped me when I was going through something and needed a little push that what I read was in my head and it pushed me to move forward in what I needed to do um, to be able to be in this moment today with the right mind, mm -hmm. the right mind, um, mentally, emotionally, and physically be here today. So their ceiling is your floor and you can have the dreams you want if you desire to go after them, there are multiple ways you do it. Don't get stuck in the time trap or the rat pack or the rat race lane of everybody else. You can have the power. You have power of choice to do what's necessary to get what you desire. And it's going to take you to be fearless, 
It's going to take some discipline. It's going to take some passion. It's going to take some consistency. It's going to take you to believe in yourself, to believe that you that, that you would really have this desire. Desire, honey, desire and passion will pull you into places, pull you into places you ain't never thought. I ain't never thought I can do this. But your desire and passion will overshadow your fear. And as you get a little bit of more evidence, a little bit of evidence, as you evolve, you keep reminding yourself of those victories. Because I always say evidence mutes fear. So when fear starts talking, look around. I love that she works in her office. She's surrounded by evidence that this is working. I'm down here in my office. You see my backdrop? And, yes. And, and, and. I'll be looking at my evidence all the time. I got too much evidence to let my knees shake and be in fear. You can shake if you want to. I'm going to drag you on along with me because we're going. We're going. <laughs> we going. I can talk all night. I've been Diamond. Thank you for coming to the World Changers Huddle, the live version with Mama Fat Sacks, who is featured on as the cover girl in I Matter magazine, the winter issue, our spring issue is loading. Oh my gosh, the spring issue is loading. Um, is it spring, fall? The next issue is loading. Okay, I don't know anymore. But make sure you go to um, ShereldiamondHogans.com and you'll be able to see the tabs for all of our resources and the community work and empowerment work that we do um, around the world. And I was so excited to be able to share this with you. Please, please, please love yourself enough. Believe in yourself enough to take these tools to help you, to equip you to create, create. Listen to the words. Get these tools to create the life, the environment, the life that you can thrive in. You can thrive in, that you can breathe in that you can thrive in and be productive and create that by using the tools that are allotted to you. We've yes. been diamond. We've been mama fast facts. Now we out. Go find the world. Go run the world. Love you, ma. Love you. Thank you.